Hi, I'm Carmela Von Buena. Welcome to Rappler Talk. We have Mr. Fidel Aguarili, the Chief Negotiator of the Communist National Democratic Front of the Philippines, to talk to us about the status of negotiations with the Philippine government. I was in Oslo in August to witness the formal resumption of talks. Optimism was palpable among the communist rebels and the government negotiators who believe that the negotiation, which have been on and off for the last three decades, could succeed under the leadership of President Rodrigo Duterte. They believe that Asia's longest-running communist insurgency could end. It has been five months since. A lot of things have happened. The negotiations are entering a critical phase. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you for having the time to talk to us. Okay lang. <laughs> Salamat din. It's been five months. Um, oh. Siguro, sir, let's start by assessing the progress of the negotiations okay. that the government um, panel wanted to be completed originally within a period of one year. I would say I'm still optimistic, no? Although, of course, there are really problems. Uh, we have come out uh, with a statement saying, uh, no, we can complete the negotiations on social and economic reforms and political and constitutional reforms in two years' time. Uh, <clears throat> Taking off from what they said one year, no, for the Caril, ah, uh, for the Ser, social and economic reforms. Then after that, perhaps another year, no, mm -hmm. for PCR, that would give them, you know, uh, three and a half to four years for, to implement, no. Uh, so, andum the the timeline as they uh, envisioned it is still there, at saka, uh, like them, we are determined to. Let's talk about the three areas to watch. Sa isa -isa natin ka, Fidel. We have the ceasefire, the releases, and the actual reforms. It's not that we're obsessed with the ceasefire, but it's always been an indicator of the status of the talks. Um, it was unprecedented that the NPA and the military declared an indefinite ceasefire, and it has been holding, but there are problems. Unilateral. Unilateral. No? Mm. And you anticipated these problems. That's why you decided to have a bilateral ceasefire agreement. The, we, we said that we will have one. Uh, I think that was in August, no? Right. Supposed right. to be by October uh, 22, mm -hmm. in bilateral. Right. And you wanted to have it signed by October, but it's January now. The two sides, you mean, no? The two oh. sides, oh. yes. It's now January. We failed to meet the deadline oh. and we're still deliberating on a bilateral oh. ceasefire agreement. Well, we are uh, we are ready to talk about the bilateral ceasefire agreement before, during, and even after the third round of talks. Um, yung unilateral ceasefire, I have to tell you this, no? Kasi uh, this seems to be, this is something that has been missed, no? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the first time yes. that we have agreed to a ceasefire this long, no? It's unprecedented, uh, yes. And, you know, uh, in August, we declared a unilateral ceasefire for seven days. Mm -hmm. Seven days for the duration of the talk. Seven or eight days mm -hmm. for the duration of the talk. Then during the negotiations, uh, they were. They kept asking, uh, "Could we not uh, extend it? Yeah. No, the unilateral ceasefire." Uh, uh, we'll have to. This is something now. We cannot just uh, no. But they said, "Okay, parang we promise we will recommend the amnesty, something like mm -hmm. that." No. Okay. Uh, and Alamo, when we, when they said we will recommend the amnesty of, to, of all political prisoners, we were talking of you know, uh, the four hundred, uh, the whole four hundred thirty-four. That's why there is even uh, a provision in the joint statement that we will submit a master list, you know, because the the basis for the amnesty would be the master list. Mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, nga, they ask if we can extend the unilateral ceasefire. And to, <laughs> to both of our, you know, eh, ano naman, uh, surprise, eh, the, the revolutionary leadership agreed no, na to extend it indefinitely. Uh -huh. Until nga yung October, ma work out yung bilateral. But eh, nothing happened. 
They so, said that they recommended. Nothing happened. You said surprisingly the revolutionary government agreed. Why is it surprising? Ay, kasi alam mo talaga, ceasefire has always been in the in the in working out the agenda for the peace negotiations. Ceasefire has always been in the end. Yeah. Oh, a long ceasefire in the end. Kasi nga, uh, the and thinking siguro ng leadership is, if you give yung ceasefire, then what is the incentive for talking, di ba? For the government to talk to us. But you agreed because? Because they said that they would release, recommend the amnesty. Uh, I think that is the basis for the uh, leadership to uh, agree na mag-issue ng uh, indefinite unilateral ceasefire in August. No? And that's where we are. Because... And that's where we are now. Uh -uh. Uh, ngayon, um, ang problem is working out the bilateral ceasefire. Um, is it still promising to have a bilateral ceasefire? We have always said we're willing to sign that. Eh. We have to have one. But you know, tulad din nung kay Noy Noy, di ba? Pag nangako ka, pag sinabi mo, kasi ang negotiations eh, basically, a matter of ano eh, salita. Word of honor. Uh -oh. uh, kung tutuparin mo. That's the basis of trust. Uh -huh. That's why, if you will remember, doon sa kay uh, Inoy Inoy, eh, ilang beses nagpa, uh, nagbawi-bawi si Alex Padilla. And so I was forced to say na, well, it's like, hindi <laughs> ko naman sinabing siya yung balasubas, pero uh, in, in Philippine, ano, <laughs> language, may tawag sa terminong yan, eh, yung bigay-bawi, balasubas. No? Now, I'm not saying sila balasubas ngayon, no? What I'm saying is, uh, uh, they have put the NDF negotiating panel, the GRB, no, in a very bad light, no, uh, with respect to yung forces in the ground. Um, Nagrelay kami sa kanilang word, eh. huh? and now, wala. Up to now, wala. Kaya medyo nakakahiya nga if you will read yung mga statement ng mga commands ng celebration ng December 26, di ba? Uh, they're saying, paano ba yan? Well, hindi naman nila tinutupad. But more than that, ganito ang sinasabi nila. Grabe ang violations na ginagawa nila. Uh, they continue to occupy schools. Uh, daycare centers, public plazas, uh, uh, even bus stops and uh, and uh, residences, no? So talagang ano na, nagiging untenable na eh. Yung, what is the danger, Capital, of the huh? ceasefire? What is the danger of the ceasefire being broken? Mr. Malaki, Jumps malaki, malaki yung danger na mabre-break yan kasi nga, uh, hindi mo mapipigilan eh. Mamaya yung tao mismo, imbes na, mismo imbes na mag-evacuate. Kasi ang, ano, ang natural recourse, mag-evacuate eh, no? Eh, syempre, wala rin naman sila nang pupunta. Nag, ang mga iba nga, kababalik lang eh. Babacuate na naman. Uh, ano na, yung... Mag, syempre, magkukomplain na. But Mr. Chamson suggested once na you continue with the talks without a ceasefire. Is that a serious... Are you serious? Well, we were that? doing that. We did that in during the, the administration of Noy Noy. We did that during the administration of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. We did that during the time of uh, General Ramos. Mm -hmm. Talk while fighting. No? And that really can, could happen. No? But there will be impact in the negotiation if, there, if you're fighting in the ground. There should not be. There should not be. I mean, it is not um, automatic. That depends on the reaction, actually, of uh, President Duterte and his military. Yeah. No? But the military is um, is having a new counterinsurgency campaign to replace yung nirereklamo yung Oplan Bayanihan. Do you welcome Hindi that? Hindi pa namin napabasa yung enhance. Yes, we've heard about yung so-called enhance uh, 
of Oplan Bayanihan only from the papers, but the exact uh, uh, component, etc., hindi namin alam what it is all about. But the point that it is refers to Oplan Bayanihan still, and alam namin ang nangyari sa Oplan Bayanihan, eh. uh, talagang uh, uh, using... Parang 1984, you've read the novel no? of uh, Orwell, yung Peace and Development uh, Programs, pero actually military operations. No? <laughs> so they put different meaning. Uh, sa bagay, sa kasalukuyang panahon, ganyan naman ang ginagawa. Eh, di ba? They call yung uh, aggression sa, <laughs> sa Libya as ano, uh, liberation, liberating the Libyan people. The ceasefire will be contingent on the releases. Yun pa rin yung hihintayin natin. To make sure it's not broken. No, on their word. On the fulfillment of their obligation. The big, there's a bigger task. Yung reform. We know, we know there is a bigger task. Reforms. That's why we are ready to pursue the negotiations with or without ceasefire, unilateral or bilateral, no? Uh, to finish the two major items. Uh, so social and economic reforms, and political. political and constitutional reforms. Let's go there, Cafidel. Um, what are the key reforms that you want in place? Siyempre, sa economic reforms, alam mo, we have always said, some people are so afraid of, ano eh, yung, alam mo, di ba, uh, I have explained this earlier in one interview, um, the new democratic revolution that the that the revolutionary movement is pursuing is basically basically a bourgeois mm -hmm. democratic revolution. Ang uh, essence niyan is uh, destroying yung structure ng feudalism. Mm -hmm. no? yung, uh, para yung mga peasants ay maliliberate no? uh, from their land, yung um, serfdom no? sa lupa and be able to yung kanilang income makuha nila ng sarili nila and after that, they, they become uh, consumers mm -hmm. of finished products that will be uh, uh, made by local industries. No? Mm -hmm. Kaya hanin-han yan, land reform and national industrialization. That is what the U.S. did no? in Taiwan, in South Korea. They tried doing it also in uh, Argentina. Uh, in in India, it was what Nehru did, no? When you talk about land reform, how do we operationalize this in the context yun of the ang, Philippines? Yun ang subject to negotiation. How how can it be operationalized? Siyempre, uh, Your proposal from uh, Meron kaming sariling proposal. We expect that they would give their own proposal and then in a negotiate. Ang point is, ang ultimate, uh, ang ultimate goal is, ano, uh, that the land will be to the will go to the tillers, and then the tillers would be supported. Yung kanyang uh, production at chaka uh, yung pagraise ng kanyang uh, prices ng goods, uh, plus yung uh, um, pagbibili niya ng mga seedlings and others, no? Kailangan may support yan na uh, ibibigay. Paano siya ka iba sa carp? Carper na... Malaki yung pagkakaiba eh. Kasi mar maraming butas eh, di ba? Sa carp is ano eh. Uh, they, merong allowance for so-called conversion mm -hmm. to real estate. So, yan ang ginawa ng mga landlord. Many lands na agricultural eh, kinonvert nila into real estate, into sugar lands, no? Into uh, export crops, no? Um, so... Okay lang yung export crops, but it's not something that, you know, you don't turn all of your land into sugar. Yeah. Cane plantations or uh, rubber plantations, pineapple, bananas. What about yung self food self-sufficiency ng tao? Eh, basic sa Pilipino yung rice, eh. Di ba? Rice and corn, no? Eh, yun lang rice and corn ang kanilang inilagay, eh. So, naglipatan ngayon yung mga landlords o yung mga iba, ginawa nila yung kanilang lupa. Uh, ecotourism, no projects, yung mga iba, real estate, yung uh, mga subdivisions and malls, no? Uh, 
Tapos si yung mga iba nag-transform into uh, banana, like yung plano ni Kawangko, hindi ba, sa Isabela, yung laki-laking lupa nun, uh, gagawing ano, uh, tatamnan ng uh, anong tawag doon, yung kasaba. Yeah, para sa, ewan, meron atang uh, uh, basic uh, ano, eh, yung component ng kasaba that will be used for uh, production somewhere, no? So those that industry. have been converted should be distributed. Should be, should be, kasi and now as a result, di ba na wala ng lupa yung mga magsasaka. Uh, kaya dumami ang ano eh, na wala ng lupa and then uh, sa rural areas and then na uh, nagpunta sa ciudad o ang iba talagang nanny went abroad, no? National industrialization. How do we operationalize? Well, national industrialization. How do we do it? What you sectors? Know, uh, the Philippines is a rich country in terms of natural resources. Uh, we have 19 of the basic metals. No? Uh, aside from gold, there is iron, there is bauxite, there is uh, copper, there is a titanium. No? Now, all of this. Components lahat yan for industrialization. So, ang, ano, ang thinking namin o ang proposal namin is ito from extraction ha, to uh, getting the basic raw material no? uh, and then to uh, semi-finished products and then to uh, finished products different na, no? Uh, steel, steel plate, corrugated mills, etc. Kasi, or we have a lot eh. Uh, tapos, marami tayong bauxite. Aluminum, I think we can control the ano eh. Uh, aluminum production all over the world eh. Because of our bauxite, ano eh. Uh, so, yun ang gawin natin. Imbes na binibigay mo, hihayaan mo yung uh, uh, mga Amerikano, Kanadyano, at ngayon, Chino, to get, <laughs> to get our natural resources, no? Bring them dun sa kanilang mga bansa because they need it for their industries and then they sell us whatever they, ano, no? Uh, yung titanium is, is necessary for, ano, for uh, jet plane technology, rocket technology. Why can't we do that, no? Dito. The moment na magawa natin yan, and then we offer jobs, di ba? Kasi you have uh, steel mills, no? Yung steel, uh, yung, yung, uh, oh, this mill, no? Di meron na dyan. And then yung uh, uh, steel uh, processing na, no? Into the various types of metal, no? Uh, so, also, we can produce our own nails. Hanggang ngayon, wala tayo. One feedback, though, is that we don't have the technical expertise. To do that is things. why it is also important yung sinasabi namin na independent foreign policy. Yung pag-ensure uh, na you, you negotiate with the mga, ano, how did China, uh, for instance, get the... Uh, technology dyan sa steel because it seems to me it seems to be na sila na ngayon ang number one steel producer eh. But they bought yung old steel mill from Germany which they imported lock, stock and barrel near the area where they had a lot of uh, iron and then dinevelop nila. Siyempre the moment you have it there then you have your ano naman uh, we have a lot oh, of engineers yeah. uh, of scientists uh, they can they can uh, then they can develop it now china i think na ad, way ahead na sila sa sa production ng steel uh, dahil sa na develop nila yung i know oxygen ano uh, imbes na old type na uh, burning furnace no meron na silang na develop uh, and now germany is asking for that kind of technology, you know. So, Is there a country lang. we're looking at that huh? could help the Philippines industrialize? Yes. May particular country that we are looking at who can well, help us course, Well, of course, that's why I said, ano, uh, you can approach, sino ba, like China now, for instance, sa steel. Perhaps, uh, yung, uh, sa oil, because we have a lot, we can approach Norway, no? Hindi yung katulad ng, ano, eh, Texaco at saka mm -hmm. ng, ano, Norway would at least try to deal with us on a 
Of course, they would like. They would also ask for <laughs> profit, no. But uh, at least it's not going to be as ma grab in a I know text ako and all that. Then we can have uh, we can approach uh, Japan, for instance, because way ahead sila sa aluminum industry. Eh. Uh, ma ano sila? Uh, of course, nandyan din naman ang US. Palagay ko sa titanium at saka sa ano. Uh, mar marami. You have to. You have to spread out. That's why Diversify. independent foreign policy. You don't, uh, yung bang tulad ng ginagawa ng mga uh, previous presidents na nakabuslot naka, naka lang sa, sa China sa, at saka sa EU. Walang ano eh, walang ano dyan talaga. Wala kang room for ano dyan. At saka ah, talagang yung experience ng, sa US eh, talaga ano. In you have you have blamed the U.S. for widespread poverty in the Philippines. How kasi do you want to... the U.S. kasi control so much eh. Uh, limbawa, uh, because we were under U.S. colonial domination for 50 years. And then uh, when we were supposed to be granted independence in 1946, uh, what did they do? They had the parity amendment no? to the Constitution to be able to pass that. Rojas had to agree na sisipain niya sa lower house, sina Taruk, Lava, etc. Sinanalo sila ang Democratic Alliance noon eh. Nang seven seats and then nandiyan pa yung Nationalista Party. Uh, so, Rojas is the grandfather of <laughs> Rojas. Anyway, uh, so the party amendment, then the basis agreement, then the but the uh, also so economy is you have the uh, the peso being tied to the dollar uh, the financial uh, rules no uh, obtaining and eh, ka sandig sa IMF World Bank uh, which is predominantly domin is dominated no by the US uh, tapos uh, Kaya lahat, even our medium of instruction, English, no? Nandiyat. <laughs> what do you want to happen? To Cultural, ano? Country's no, relations. No, independence. The... Part of the demand is national independence. My critics kayo, and there is a fear that you might be pulling President Duterte to the, to the left. The, to the left. <laughs> what do it you say to that? It is not leftist. My God, yan ang sinasa, it is not leftist to push for land reform. To push for national industrialization, it is in fact for national survival as a nation. Because uh, if we don't develop our own industries to benefit our own people, provide jobs, uh, have our own products, etc., we are not going to be able to do it. service oriented ang economy. Natin. Ah, uh, yan. Like, we have a lot of call centers. Pero alam mo naman ang kalagayan din dyan, no? Cheap labor. Talented labor, no? In the Philippines. Talks have been on and off for the past three decades, Kapidel. And the other criticism is that you're asking Dao for utopia. That you're it asking for utopia. the ideal. I don't know if it is utopia. Alam mo, if, if, itong, if, you will, uh, if you will only allow yung explanation na ganito, no? Yeah, nyo. Is that utopia? I mean, how can it be utopia? Uh, are you saying that the U.S., which has industrialized uh, Japan, European countries, uh, Taiwan, are they utopian? No. They are advanced industrially. Di ba? Industrialized sila. And that is what is hinahabol namin sa negotiations. No? But when you negotiate capital, you have a way, there's a way you want things to be. And there's an, well, the other side might think it's more realistic to do some things a certain way. So do you meet, there's a middle ground to this? We expect there would be, no? <laughs> we expect na, ano, uh, ang problema kasi, I'll be honest, uh, I don't know, tanungin mo sila. But during, in last October, Hinarap na namin uh, ang parts ng aming social and economic uh, reforms draft. Ang binigay sa amin ng gobyerno, a small sheet of paper 
with 10 points. They call it results or something. A elimination of poverty. Uh, yung ban general na ganyan. Uh, alam mo, tumagal dun eh. And they were insisting na it, it, uh, ito ang pag-usapan pero walang concrete, no? Ito yung ano. So, yung sumandal yung very clear sa amin. Economic development through agrarian reform and national industrialization. No? Kasi, uh, whether they like it or not. It may be, no, na yung ganyang klaseng analysis is based galing sa Marxist analysis, no? Pero that is because uh, Marx naman studied the development of capitalism, mm -hmm. no? And then, ta itong later years naman, eh, paano ba na-develop ang Taiwan? Paano ba na-develop ang ano? Patay na si Marx, no? no? <laughs> ang South Korea. It, it, the same. Ano nangyari sa Japan after the Second World War to break yung hold ng emperor? They had to. MacArthur was insistent on that. And, and, and ano, Truman naman agreed, no? Bring nila. Uh, so, it is not... <laughs> hindi yan, ano, eh. Um, if people really want the country to advance, progress, for us to have... Uh, uh, our own self-reliant economy, you know, uh, develop, providing jobs for our people, health care. Mm -hmm. Kasi pagka may industries na, malaki na mga income ng gobyerno in terms of taxation, parang sa Europe, di ba? So they can, uh, they can fund uh, free education, free housing, free health care, no? Uh, so, yeah. yan, yan, yan lang. Iyan ba eh, ano, <laughs> socialismo? Ibang-iba naman ang socialismo. In August, during the first round of talks, I saw how optimistic you were that all these reforms will be put in place. Five months since, how do you assess President Duterte? You think he's still, he's very, he's committed to deliver? Well, he still say uh, he is for the poor, no? That's the basic, ano naman, premise, for the poor siya. Para sa may hirap. Uh, I don't, I have not heard him lately say na he is leftist or he is socialist, no? Uh, <clears throat> Kasi, as I said, social justice ang issue dito eh. Uh -huh. uh, elimination of poverty. Agree kami dyan. Kaya lang, mag ano tayo, konkreto, how to do it. No? Uh, yung providing uh, uh, welfare and uh, uh, better quality of life no? for our people. No? You protested yung Marcos Burial. Oh, you're Marcus protesting Burial. the endo. endo. And then oh. your comment on the extrajudicial killings. Mm -hmm. How do you assess him five months later? Kasi nga, yan sa endo. Binawi daw naman. Ako si Kus Bebot, binawi na daw nila yung... Binawi na daw niya yung kanyang... Memo on the yung win-win. Win-win, <laughs> ano. Uh, kasi hindi win-win yun. <laughs> Kawawa yung mga manggagawa. Uh, ngayon, ganito. Pagdating sa analysis namin dyan sa... Um, it's turning out, no? Itong war on drugs, so-called war on drugs, masyadong... Ano na eh, against, parang war against the poor na. Yung uh, mga pinapatay. Yung nasa lower rung. No? Yung, yung users. Huh? Na pwede mo naman i-rehabilitate yan eh. Yung small time pusher. No? Uh, in, siyempre, yung small time pusher, that para sa hama rin yan. Uh, pero yung... yung where is Peter, Peter Lim ba yan? Uh -huh. Di ba kinausap niya yan? At sabi niya, number one na, ano, asa na yun ngayon? At saka, ano ba yung nangyari dun sa apat na general na pinangalanan niya? Uh, going to the supply side, di ba? 
Yan ang nag- you made a statement when you launched, you mobilized a rally against the Marcos Burial. At the same time, you said um, you support, you will continue to uh, no, support no, we the peace No, no, we never said we will support uh, uh, the burial yeah, of Marcos. Yeah, you are against the burial, but the talks will but continue. But it it's is not something that will not, sa tingin namin at that time, something that we think will not affect the peace negotiations. Yeah. And issues mm-hmm. have been piling up. But now, ano, meron kaming nakikita na ano eh, eh part ata of the scheme to rehabilitate the Marcoses, you know? like, uh, ano ba yung uh, recount, recount, no, <laughs> ng vice presidential <laughs> votes dyan sa ano, uh, tapos itong, uh, um, you know, if, uh, Sabi niya ngayon, ang utang na loob niya, tatlo o apat na tao lang. Isa na doon si Aimee. Uh, well, uh, siya yung siya nagsabi niyan. Uh, sabi niya, utang na uh, pangako niya yan ng eleksyon. Uh, marami siyang pinangako ng eleksyon. <laughs> Bakit yan lang ang tutuparin niya? Uh, tutuparin niya ng tuloy-tuloy, no? Uh, ano yan uh, apektado na limbawa sa karil there is a provision on indemnifying indemnifying the uh, victims political uh, those who suffered under the martial law regime ano ba what will happen now to that provision no? uh, kaya Kung hindi magbabayad ang gobyerno dahil sa pangako kay Marcos, ah, eh, ano na yan? Uh, iba na yan, di ba? Uh, in other words, it's accumulating. Accumulating the points for uh, uh, perhaps imbang coming out with a new analysis no of the situation eh parang nanjaja na no uh, so siguro as a revolutionary leadership naman yan eh or, on the flip side how do you make sure that you are not co-opted by the government with all of this uh, principles we stand by our principles no? what is the delicate balancing act there ano naman eh makikita yan sa process ng negotiation no kaya magandang ang itinutulak yung negotiation eh doon sa pagkamit ng reforma ano ba yung mga reforma na dapat i- i- ipatupad no uh, ano ba yung mga reforma na yan eh yung previous neoliberal policies mm-hmm. na pinapatupad na pinatupad noon ni eh, Noynoy at saka ni eh, Gloria no uh, papatuloy ba yan? Wala bang break dyan? Aba, italo pa tayo ng mga Latin American countries eh. Tinitira na nila ngayon yung neoliberal at something that has kept them in, ano? But the communication lines with President Duterte are always open, would you say? It is always open. Oh. Pero, um, syempre, meron nang kaakibat yung uh, merong Nabuti sana kung tuloy na lang yung negotiations uh, sa usapan. Kasi baka ano pa eh. Uh, iba kasi yung bawa. Uh, si Alba, si Bebot at si Nani, they're, they're, they're my friends. No? Uh, kahit wala sila dyan sa panel, on a personal level, uh, I can talk to them about mm-hmm. Some personal matters, mga ganyan, ganyan. Uh, And they would not be, uh, they would not consider it as something na, oh, ilalagay mo across the table. Hindi naman ba <laughs> Grabe ka naman, di ba? Eh, pero siguro, baka pagdating sa kanya, eh, sasabihin niya yan. Tulad ni Estrada, di ba? Uh, Yung mga yan, pagkatapos kong tagpuin dito sa Malacanang, eh, 
uh, oh, manghuhuli ng general, oh, mga masasamang tao yan. Baka ganun kasi ang mangyari. Uh, pagka na, oh, lumalas-dalas ka at saka ano. Kaya yung usapan naman has always been ano eh. Yung on the yung palitan about what is uh, what we think should be happening tapos siya naman saying na ganito nga. It's a critical stage ngayon sa negotiation. I think merong pagka-critical yung third round. What do we expect? You're going there? No, we can... Uh, January 18th. Let us see. Kasi talagang uh, what, they, what, what we want is focus ang negotiations on social and economic reforms. Eh. Kasi, uh, of course, yung first day would be paglalatag lang ng ano, outstanding issues. No? Like uh, violations ng karil na ginagawa. No? Uh, which are also violations of the ceasefire, no? Uh, this will be the most difficult round yet, it would appear. No, they, 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 they can always say, di raise naman namin yan kay ano eh, mismo, personally. Kay Presidente? Oo, kasi siya mismo ang nagsabi eh. No, the armed forces do not have the right to stay in communities, occupy schools, occupy churches, occupy public plazas. If they want to remain in the communities, they can dig fox holes. Siya mismo nagsabi niya eh. Kasi talaga naman violation niya ng IHL, mm -hmm. International Humanitarian Law. Kahit na sabihin mo pang, wala kayong teritoryo. So we don't expect a huh? joint ceasefire? Kahit In walang teritoryo, <laughs> wow, baho, hindi naman kayo pwede mag-occupy ng schools, violation niya ng International Humanitarian Law. So, hindi, expect? ihaharap lang sa kanila yan. And then, uh, tingnan natin kano kanila maging response. Uh, kung gusto nila, sasabihin nila, eh di kaya nga mabuti mag-discuss na tayo ng bilateral ceasefire. Sige, discuss natin. O, oh, ganyan. Pero, yun nga, marami yan. Anong gagawin nyo dyan? O, oh, sa ano ba yung enhance? O plan ba yan ihan? Two other issues, um, Cafidel. When the talks are completed, what will happen to the New People's Army? The combatants? Ano? Uh, we can talk about it. We can talk about it. But it's something that we, the two sides, will have to talk about. Uh, meron kami mga proposal that they, they be uh, designated as forest guards in as much as uh, the military is claiming they have no territory but only live in the mountains. So, okay, the forest guards to, 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 to ano, uh, then, of course, uh, we don't know what will happen, di ba? The yeah, moment, but they will not um, lay down, set aside their arms? Hindi naman sila nagdi-demand ng setting aside uh, arms, eh. Uh, they did not demand it sa MNLF. They did not demand... Uh, sa MILF, meron silang parang uh, decommissioning, no? Pero, proseso yon no? Uh, tsaka nakatali yan sa... BBL eh, right. di ba? Uh, tapos, uh, there is also the distinct possibility, no? Na, ano, uh, alam mo, the imperial US <laughs> will not just sit down. No. What do you mean? Uh, uh, itong ginagawa niya, yung uh, uh, visit ng Russian ship and going there, no? Uh, and then hitting the U.S. at every turn, no? And then, uh, uh, merong point yan na the U.S. will move for regime change. Right now, I think they are content in demonizing him. So you're that talking time. about this scenario, so how will you respond? Well, we, kung sakali talaga there will be moves to remove him, uh, lalo na kung armed beings, no? Oh, then, you know, we can offer an alliance uh, na, uh, to oppose uh, uh, um, intervention, aggression against uh, uh, the Philippine, Philippine state no? by a foreign power. Uh, just like what happened in China, right? when the Japanese 
forces entered China, uh, yung Manchuria. And foreign the, forces? Huh? Foreign, you're, talking of, you're, you're thinking of the possibility of foreign forces in the Philippines? U.S. Eh, foreign forces naman yan. Ah. <laughs> Bakit hindi may foreign ng U.S.? Diyos ko naman. Kahit na yung 600 nila, foreign troops yan eh. Uh, violation of ano eh. Yung sinasabi lang 600 na rotation, eh violation niya ng mismong constitution ni Cory, di ba? Ba't dyan pinayagan ni, ni Noy Noy? Ano yun? Foreign troops yan. Pero kung itong, and, and part of these foreign troops might be used against him, no? <laughs> uh, pero ano... Um, An alliance. How, how, what form will this Well, take? like, uh, it does not have to be a, a formal alliance na, no? Bawa, as I was saying, di ba? If you know your ano, yung mga history of the Chinese Revolution, nung pumasok ang Japan sa Manchuria, eh, ang naging decision ng Communist Party was uh, to declare a united front with uh, Chiang Kai-shek in opposing the uh, aggression of Japan sa Manchuria, tsaka yung uh, Manchuria, sa Northeast, no? yung pag ano. Uh, depende yan sa gagawin ng US. <laughs> Di ba sabi ko naman? Depende sa gagawin ng US. Depende sa uh, magiging reaction din ni Digong. Uh, kasi, um, eh, kung imbes na lumaban, eh, sasabihin nga niya, eh, oh, punta na kayo din sa Malacanian, bibigay ko na lang sa inyo. Eh, bakit kami makikipag-alyado? Di ba, sinabi niya yan, you don't need to mount a coup. You can come and I will give it to you. Uh, but I don't know if he will do that or what he will do, etc. Uh, pero, uh, I think yan, yung mga spoilers dyan will, will start yan, ganyan, no? Eh, marami na naman, di ba, na nagawan impeach, resign, remove him, di ba, marami na nagawa. Naga, so this, naga, this is what worries you, that all this, that you believe that these things will happen. Siguro, pwedeng sabihin, the world would be prepared for or something to study or continue study, continuous, continue watching yung situation, how, it, how things will develop. Yeah. Uh, Daming kailangang bantayan. Um, Siguro, bantayan. Kapidal, as a final question, do you feel that um, the public supports the peace talks? Dapat, sana. And that's and why... Maybe you can make an appeal. Why is yes, it important? Yes, of course. I would like to make an appeal. Na da, the, mabuti talaga the public should support the peace negotiations. They can... Uh, they, they, they should uh, inquire or uh, look into yung pro, uh, the, the draft programs ng NDF at saka yung draft program ng gobyerno. Tingnan, no? Uh, Kasi that is what uh, we have been doing since ano, nung, uh, June, no? yung, mga, yung mga lumayang consultants, they have been going around the country, talking about the reforms, uh, napos, uh, and uh, mga deal, yung talking with LGUs, uh, talking with academe, mga churches, mga forums, explaining kung ano nga ang position ng left, kung ano ba, at yung pag, uh, yung statement, yung or guardedly optimistic, we're not just because he allowed the burial of Marcos in, no, we will not, we will stop talking, no, we will continue talking. Even if they did not release, we will continue to talk. Let's finish the two agreements, diba? Oh, we can continue talking whether there is a ceasefire or there is no ceasefire. No, we challenge him, no? Oh, kung walang ceasefire, eh, bakit? Hindi ba pwede mag-usap? Eh, kung talagang you are for reforms, eh, welcome mo yan, di ba? Welcome uh, reforms naman ang ating pinag-uusapan, eh. At saka ikaw naman, you said change is coming, di ba? Oh, at saka marami ka dyan sa gobyerno mo na makakaliwa, di ba? O baka they can help you out, no? Or, you know, things like that. Pero, um, siya ang mag-design, siya ang mag ano, Nasa kanila yung response, eh. Basta kami, we're ready to negotiate for the next two years agreements on the social and economic reforms, political and constitutional reforms. We owe it to the people eh, to present. Ano ba yung pinaglalaban yung 40 years na? Although nandiyan na yan sa aming 10-point program, no? Pero, kasi, it's, yung 10-point program na yun is a fighting program eh. 
Kaya mahirap sabihin, oh yan ang ano. Kaya now we are presenting yung program namin uh, in concrete terms in relation to existing yeah. government policies, government uh, programs, etc. Paano ba yan? Paano yeah. sa tingin namin magkakaroon ng reforma? Thank you for your time, Ka Fidel. Ay, salamat din. We have been speaking with the Chief Negotiator of the Communist National Democratic Front of the Philippines, Mr. Fidel Agkawili. I'm Carmela Fonbuena. Thank you for watching. We'll monitor the developments in Rome for the third round of talks. Um, follow the updates on Rappler.com.